studies show that the pain of losing money hurts three times as bad as the joy of making money. We are hardwired to hate loss, to avoid uncertainty, to avoid pain really, which makes it hard with a market that's done nothing but go up and up and up over the past several years to know as an investor, how should I be investing with the market as an all time high? How do I avoid the pain that comes with the loss that might be inevitable at any point at this time? So what I'm going to do in today's video is give you three things to consider of how should you invest when the market's at an all-time high. Hey everybody, I'm James Canole, founder of Root Financial Partners, and I'm here to show you how you can create your secure retirement. We're in an interesting time right now. Last year, we had the fastest ever bear market. The S&P 500 lost over a third of its value in five short weeks. Then, in the midst of global uncertainty, of shutdowns of a pandemic that was only beginning to spread, the market did nothing but rise. We had the best ever, the fastest ever recovery, and ever since then, the stock market's been on an unstoppable tear. Well, in some ways, that's great and that's exciting and we love what it's done to our portfolios. In other ways, it's absolutely terrifying. It's terrifying to know how should I invest with things as uncertain, things seemingly as unstable as they are right now. And as investors, especially investors preparing for retirement, this brings a tremendous amount of fear and uncertainty. It brings back memories of 2008. And one thing I hear from so many people is I was on track to retire, I was doing great, and then 2008 hit. And then I wasn't able to retire, or then I had to go back to work, or then just all my retirement hopes and dreams were shattered in a few short months or a year or two during that 2008 meltdown. Now, here's the thing. As difficult as that was, and as much as I empathize with people whose financial security and portfolios were wiped out during that time, if you follow these three tips I'm gonna give you today, the chances of that happening to you will be completely minimized. So let's walk through what you as an investor can do to invest. And whether you're watching this now or in the future, whatever is going on in the market, these principles are gonna be timeless so that you can help to apply them to your situation to make sure you're doing the best you possibly can with your portfolio. Now, here's the thing. With investors, or as investors, we have very short-term memories. As much as we like to believe that's not the case, we have incredibly short memories and we always seem to think that what we're going through is unique. Last year we had COVID and we had a shutdown and we had an election year and it was unprecedented. Well, the year before that we had new tax plans and trade wars and a huge amount of uncertainty. And before that we had Brexit and we had global uncertainty and we had inflation concerns. And before that we had, and I could keep going back and back and back and back. The thing is we live in a great big world and there are always going to be a lot of things that as investors would seemingly indicate we should not be investing at this time. With the uncertainty or the bad news going around or whatever it is, there's always something that should put us in our place and tell us you should not invest right now. But let's take a look at some perspective here. When you understand that the position we're in today is not unique, now the certainly the specific incidences, the specific things going on are unique in many ways, but the principle of this, the fact that good things and bad things are always happening is not unique at all. How has the market performed through those ups and downs? Well, 50 years ago, the Dow Jones Industrial Average was trading at around 800 points, or 800. 65 years ago, the Dow Jones Industrial Average was trading about 404. Today, as of this recording, it's trading at well over 34,000. Now that does not even include the dividends that have been paid from these companies. So what does it tell us? means despite all the bad news, despite all the bad things that are constantly happening, these bad things that we're facing today are not unique, there's been bad things always happening, the market does nothing but go up. Now there's absolutely temporary declines and those declines are absolutely painful, but in the midst of that, the market continues to rise. So whether we're looking at rate cuts or government shutdowns or US elections or the Federal Reserve raising rates or lowering rates or unemployment or companies going out of business, these are all just things that have happened over the past several years. Now, despite all that, the market has continued to rise. So what are we to do as investors? With markets sitting at all time highs, you can say, James, that's great, that happened, but this time is different. We're at all time highs, we've been at all time highs, certainly something's gonna happen. Well, UBS actually did a study, and in this study they looked at the monthly S&P 500 total return data going all the way back to 1945. So over 75 years of data in this study, and what they looked at is they wanted to know when the market was at all time highs, 
that you asked from any entry point in there, at any point that you would have entered the market when it was at its all-time high, what were your odds of a positive outcome? As investors, we want to eliminate as much as possible the odds of a negative outcome, the odds that we put money in the market and it falls. Well, what they saw was that, and this is the important piece here, investments and markets making new highs did better than purely random entry points. You would think just logically, okay, if we're at all time highs, what's gonna happen next? There's gonna be lows. And then maybe highs in the future, but not for a little while. Well, what this study showed was if you just took random entry points into the market, on average, you did much better if you only used entry points where the market was hitting all time highs. That doesn't make intuitive sense, but we invest because the market continues to hit all time highs. All we know is what's already happened. If we could see where the market was going to be in five years, 10 years, 20 years, certainly 50 years, we probably would not be referring to these times as all-time highs. We would just see it as another stepping point along the way to where the market's going to eventually go. Now, can we guarantee this? Of course not. But if we look at history as any perspective, what it tells us is that investing at all-time highs isn't necessarily any more dangerous or any more uncertain than investing at any other point along the way. So one author put it this way. He said, this sounds counterintuitive, but investors should remember that for every 2000 and 2007, when buying in at all time highs subsequently turned out to be a bad idea, there were many more 1982s, 1992s, 1995s, 2013s and 2016s when investors were richly rewarded for taking that leap of faith. What do all those dates have in common? They were points at which in the moment seemed like terrible times to jump into the market. The market had been running, but had you invested there anyways, you would have been richly rewarded for investing, even when it seemed like not such a great time to do so. So that being said, kind of setting the table with that or, or, or framing this question with that or this topic with that, what do we do? Does this just mean, okay, throw your money in and, and, and hope for the best? Absolutely not. Here are three things that investors should look for in order to make the most of investing in markets that are all-time highs. Number one, focus on your needs, your income, your time horizon. Whenever anyone comes to us and says, how should I invest? We do not answer that question until we've gone through a full financial plan and we've gone through an analysis to understand what are your income needs? Not just today, but in the future. And where is that income going to come from? Because until we understand your income and your cash flow needs, it's hard to design a portfolio that's suitable to address that. So if you're retired or preparing to retire soon, you're gonna have a whole lot different conversation and analysis that you wanna do than someone who doesn't need to access their funds for say another 20 years or so. If you have 20, 30 years until you need your funds, uh, investing at all time highs maybe doesn't seem like a fun thing to do, but only until you consider where we are today is likely nowhere near where we're gonna be in 20, 30 plus years in the stock market. So if we think the market's high now, wait till you see it then. Now for people who are preparing to retire soon or who are maybe already prepared or already retired, maybe you don't want to have all of your money invest in that market that is at all time highs. You may need to have part of your portfolio that's designed to meet your short term needs or your medium term needs. So instead of just having all stock investments, that's why we own things like cash, or bonds. We don't own them for their growth potential. We own them because it provides security. We own them because these are the types of investments or these are the types of assets that aren't subject to the wild fluctuations that we're so concerned about with the stock market. So with any portfolio, you need part of it to grow and that part is gonna be dependent upon where you are in your investing life cycle, but you may need another part of it to be able to address your short-term needs regardless of what happens in the stock market. In 2008, when a lot of portfolios were wiped out, had you taken this approach? And if you had known how much do I need in conservative investment so that regardless of what the stock market does, I have income that I can pull from, if you had enough of your portfolio in cash and bonds to meet those needs, well, what that did is when your stock investments dropped, assuming they were diversified and invested the right way, it bought time. You could live on the bonds and cash giving time for the stocks to recover, which they ultimately did. So by understanding your income needs, you can intentionally design a portfolio that has the cash needs, the bond needs, the stock needs that will help you meet your income needs both today and well into the future. Number two, have a plan. If the market drops, do you need income from your portfolio? 
Well, if not, then maybe you rebalance. You know, ideally you're invested in not just one part of the market, but you have your money spread out into many different places. Rebalance and take advantage of those downturns. Are there some assets that have gone up in value more than others? Can you rebalance or bring that back into alignment, which can help to reduce the risk and increase the returns of that portfolio over time? Well, if the market drops and you do need money from your portfolio, be wise about where you're taking money from. Don't just treat it as one giant portfolio that you're taking income from. You want to make sure that you're probably taking money from the assets that have gone up in value. If we go back to 2008 again, and you had a portfolio, say, of 50% stocks, 50% bonds. Well, when that downturn happened, you probably don't want to pull money out of the stock portion of your portfolio. Because from peak to trough, so from top to bottom, over about that 18 months of that downturn, the stock portion of your portfolio, if it was all in, say, S&P 500 type investments, was down about 56%. Now, that's not a loss until you sell, but if you sell it to create income, that is now a loss that's permanent. If instead you'd taken money from the bond portion of your portfolio, that probably stayed stable or even gone up in value, well, that 56% loss was only a paper loss. And it took some time to recover, but it since recovered and then some over the following several years. So have a plan for what you're going to do. And that plan is gonna be dependent upon do you need the funds or not? How close are you to retirement? What are your income needs? And then make the moves of either rebalancing or pulling money from the right place at that time. And then finally, number three, and this is probably most important, maintain perspective. It's so easy to get caught up in the events of today and the current events and all the bad stuff happening. Like I said before, there's over 7 billion people on this earth. There are always going to be bad things happening. There's also gonna be really amazing things happening all the time. What's the media gonna focus on? They're gonna focus on those bad things. So if all we're ever doing is focusing on these things that are happening, as opposed to these things are happening, and by the way, it's these things are driving the returns in our portfolio. The reason markets always go up is because innovation is always happening. Productivity is always improving. New technologies are always being invented. More and more people are doing better and better things. This is why markets are going up, because we're investing in real companies, they're doing real things. But when all we ever focus on is this, the negativity, the bad stuff, of course it's gonna seem like a terrible time to invest. But if we can maintain perspective and realize that throughout human history, there's always been great things and bad things happening, but the good has outweighed the bad, and productivity and standards of living and just overall global wellness has continued to increase, that's where we can have the perspective that this too shall pass. Whether it's the COVID crisis, whether it's unemployment, whether it's an election, whether it's a housing market downturn, whatever it is, it's going to be bad news, but if we have the perspective that that will pass, that's the most important thing that we can do as investors. In closing, I'll leave you with this statistic, which I think is an important one to help create that perspective. Going back to that UBS study that I mentioned, what they found, again, the study showing that investments at market all-time highs tended to perform better than investments at any random entry point into the stock market. Here were the numbers though from that study. In 34% of all cases, after buying at an all-time high, which is where we are as of this recording, I don't know where the market's gonna be when you watch this, but at an all-time high today, in 34% of the cases, an investor would at no future point have seen the investment, including dividends, trade in the red, meaning no declines. And now keep in mind they're looking at monthly total return. So maybe some daily downturns, but any monthly returns, a third of all the time, they never experienced a downturn. In 59% of the cases, so nearly six out of 10 times, the investor would at no point have suffered a greater loss than a 5% drawdown. So for 60% of the time, the worst the investor ever fared was a 5% loss before the all-time highs continued to march forward. And in just 15% of all instances, would an investor have suffered a bear market of more than a 20% decline in their initial investment value. I wanna be clear that everyone experiences a bear market of more than 20% decline at some point, but a 20% decline from the initial value, that happened in only 15% of the instances. So this isn't to say that I'm predicting the market will never go down again, that would be foolish. This isn't to say the market won't go down now before it goes back up again. What this is to say is oftentimes, the biggest risk as an investor isn't the market going down, it's sitting on the sidelines for too long or being conservative for too long and missing out on the market steady advancement going forward. So in summary, if you can focus on your needs, both your income and your time horizon, if you can have a plan, 
of either rebalancing or pulling funds from the right place. And if you can maintain perspective, then you as an investor should be prepared for whatever the market is going to throw at you in the future. Thanks for watching. This is James Canal with Root Financial Partners. If you can think of someone else who might benefit from the information in this video, please share this video with them. And if you enjoyed this video, please make sure that you liked it and also subscribe so you'll be notified anytime new videos just like this come out. If you want more information about how you can create a secure retirement, be sure to check out our podcast, Ready for Retirement, where we have weekly episodes dedicated to teaching you, you what you need to know to retire well. And if you are interested in our services to see how we help people create their secure retirement, be sure to check out our website at rootfinancialpartners.com.